So please join me in uh, welcoming Saber Hossein from the uh, University of Missouri, Columbia. So there was a lot of interest in uh, these presentations last year and a lot of interest, interest in I2B2 on Snowflake. So I think we're thrilled to have Saber here to speak on it. And I will turn over to you at this point. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm uh, Mohammed Saber Hussein. Um, I'm a software engineer at uh, Next Gen Biomedical Informatics Center, uh, University of Missouri, Columbia. Uh, <clears throat> today, I'm going to present our work on I2B on Snowflake, Serverless, and Beyond. The objectives of this uh, presentation is to describe a process for to simplify the deployment and maintenance of I2B2, uh, uh, recognizing the fact leveraging cloud technologies can simplify I2B2 support. And the benefit is we can scale up our I2B2 databases to support multi-institutional clinical research. Uh, at first, I would like to uh, uh, discuss about some of the key uh, um, points that inspired us to develop Snowflake as one of our um, I2B2's backend supported database. Uh, we all know that uh, 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 the I2B2 uh, platform has a complex architecture. Uh, 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 we at least need three servers uh, uh, to uh, uh, run a functional I2B2. Um, these are the uh, uh, Apache Web Server, um, JBoss Wildfly server and the database server. Um, in Apache Web Server, we have uh, components. Uh, we can have components like Web Client, Admin uh, Panel, and the Proxy Server. Uh, uh, IWT users uh, uh, basically interact with the uh, Web Client, uh, and um, the Web Client uh, uh, then uh, 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 transfer uh, user-generated query to I2B2 to backend. Uh, uh, server uh, where all magic happens, like uh, I2B2 uh, backend servers uh, translate those, uh, those uh, user generated query into SQL queries and uh, run into their uh, corresponding um, data, uh, database uh, schema stored in the database. So, deployment of and maintenance of I2B2 can be challenging. Uh, uh, we have to install and configure the I2B2 components in its own corresponding servers. Uh, we need to do system administration tasks uh, such as uh, installing, configuring software and hardware for running those servers. Uh, uh, we, uh, we need to monitor server instances uh, such as we need to capture and store, store uh, server logs, monitor CPU and memory usage. Uh, we uh, also want to uh, ensure it is highly available, scalable, and secure. Uh, in our uh, last presentation, uh, we demonstrated that I2B2 can be deployed as serverless using cloud technologies. Uh, we can have our servers, uh, um, uh, like uh, the web client and the web server running in ECA, ECS Fargate uh, serverless compute engine. We can have our load balancers. And um, so, uh, and in our first deployment, we had our um, um, database installed in AWS RDS, uh, which uh, basically do all the uh, database, uh, database administration tasks. So once we have our uh, I2B2 running in production. Uh, we introduced uh, I2B2 in uh, one of our um, course um, course where students started using the I2B2 and learned about it. Uh, it was about uh, 30, uh, more than 30 uh, students, and uh, uh, when they started running the queries, the uh, system became responsive. Uh, so we. Uh, investigated the uh, uh, server um, uh, server uh, instances and found that like most of the heavy burdens is uh, in uh, in the uh, i2v2 backend database and it is uh, memory intensive work those are memory intensive works so having load balancer in here uh, is not helpful so we need to scale the databases so uh, uh, we explored the RDS databases and it only provides like read and write replica but in in uh, our case i2v2 is all about uh, reading from the um, database. 
So, uh, and we also have our some uh, organizational goals, like uh, we want to have all our um, uh, all our applications, backends, uh, database uh, running in Snowflake, so that we don't need to spend more uh, uh, money in uh, having servers in different places, uh, and we don't want to uh, use them all. Um, and we also uh, run, uh, want uh, wanted to uh, run uh, ITV on larger data set. So uh, uh, there are some uh, challenges in uh, making the database uh, scale, uh, scalable and load balancing. Like uh, in cloud um, uh, environment, if you deploy server, you have to like uh, uh, compute the storage requirement. Uh, also, like um, the scalability, uh, you have to estimate the scalability of the storage. Also, the computing resources, and you have, you you also need to do uh, 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 different database administration tasks. Those are like um, heavy burden for uh, organization, uh, small organ organizations. So uh, uh, we uh, then we decided uh, we should uh, like uh, uh, modify I two V two backend database and. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, wanted to like uh, add a Snowflake as an additional uh, database uh, base, uh, engine in I2B to uh, uh, backend. So uh, now uh, uh, it is easy to scale database instances with, uh, with minimal effort. We can like uh, 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 define the minimum and maximum cluster, but we are not, uh, we don't need, uh, we are not using, uh, uh, till now we are only using one instance. Um, um, now the IW2 database inside uh, in our own institution data lake for easy access and management. Uh, now we don't need to uh, transfer data from source systems to the IW2 backend database. It reduced infrastructures and maintenance cost for managing separate database instances. Uh, because of the implementation, uh, we were able to uh, 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 combine all the data source from the GPC side. We have 30 institution data in one place uh, 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 in a combined views. And uh, we uh, uh, created ITP2's uh, fact and uh, dimension as view on top of those uh, that combined view. And uh, okay, so uh, before uh, moving further, I would like uh, to add um, to discuss something about the Snowflake data cloud. Um, the data platform is cloud as uh, Snowflake Data Cloud is a uh, data uh, data platform as cloud service. Uh, it, it provides automatic uh, data management, uh, eliminates the time and effort of managing data warehouse infrastructures. Um, it organizes data into its uh, internal optimized, compressed, and columnar format. Uh, it provides qu uh, faster query processing by using multiple virtual warehouses, automating query optimization, uh, micro partitioning concepts, and cluster automatic clustering and uh, clustering of table. Uh, it supports vertically uh, and horizontal scaling of virtual warehouses, uh, warehouses without having uh, any disruptions. It separates computational cost and storage cost. So I will uh, discuss uh, these uh, in uh, upcoming slides. Um, Snowflake also uh, uh, provides um, uh, powerful analytical uh, web um, uh, web client platform where you can do a lot of things, but I will only focus on the th uh, ad, uh, things that become a uh, handful in uh, perspective to I2B2. So here you can uh, 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 see the queries running under uh, uh, by by the users. Here you can see the, uh, we have I2B2 data user which uh, uh, is responsible for like um, uh, to manage the CRC uh, schema. Uh, you can see all the uh, queries uh, of I2B2 running in here. Uh, you can uh, they, you can also uh, visualize the um, query pl uh, planners execution plan uh, with uh, associated uh, byte scan uh, and the row scan. Uh, you can also usage monitoring um, uh, in respect of compute and also storage. So here you, you can see we have different warehouses for our different I2V2 environment. In our uh, organization, we have uh, different I2V2 uh, instances uh, configured with different projects. You can see the created uses in I2V2 warehouses is much uh, uh, is much more than the dev warehouses. But those are those servers are uh, all uh, running all the time. But um, one uh, here comes the uh, benefit of uh, uh, auto suspend of virtual warehouses in uh, Snowflake. Uh, 
Um, so in I2B2, users do, uh, don't run queries all the time. So we don't need to uh, run the server instances all the time. Um, um, the server, uh, so uh, uh, we can configure the virtual warehouses like uh, it will be suspended after two minutes or three minutes. Uh, uh, and it, um, whenever user runs the query, it instantly, uh, instantly uh, respond the virtual warehouse, run the query, and after two minutes, it uh, automatically shuts down. So here, uh, that's why here um, the product in production we have many users uh, running the queries, and it, it is costing uh, more than the uh, dev warehouse. And we can also store uh, uh, monitor uh, uses of storage um, for in each database. So in, in one of our project, we have GPC data loaded, and for uh, eighteen point four billions of observation facts occupies uh, only. 205 GB of storage. So in typical cloud storage, you'll find like it uh, charts for you, um, uh, your index, uh, in, uh, it will um, uh, charts for your index data and uh, also backup data, but here you will uh, pay whatever you only stored. So in our GPC multi-institutional uh, I2B2 data lake, uh, we have 31 million patients, uh, we have 18.4 uh, billion records of uh, uh, 31 million patients. And uh, uh, we, uh, to support uh, multi-institutional clinical support, uh, uh, we introduced uh, uh, federated login in our I2B2, thanks to the I2B2 developer uh, to make it easier to integrate federated login into I2B2. And we also modified some of the, uh, um, um, uh, we also added an additional column in a patient dimension to represent the uh, multi-institutions uh, site. Uh, uh, we also introduced a, a breakdown for the GPC uh, uh, sites. Uh, that, that is uh, become really helpful uh, uh, for the clean, clinical researchers. And uh, uh, when I ran uh, the query with a simple, um, uh, uh, with three fact, um, three concepts, it takes uh, 54 seconds to generate uh, patient and the breakdown uh, from the GPC uh, data set. Uh, I also run uh, another query with more concept in it and I enabled all the uh, result type like patient set, uh, encounter set, top 10, 20, uh, top 20 medications, diagnosis, then timeline everything and it took only uh, 218 seconds to complete the query. So uh, I'm not uh, uh, best user, you can say. So I, I tried to um, uh, create some of the queries uh, for, uh, ranging from two to uh, eight facts and ran the queries in uh, each virtual warehouses. And uh, mostly it takes uh, like uh, for, uh, for temporal queries, I only took two queries because I was not having any patient counts uh, for that, but it took uh, 200 to like 100 seconds. And for same financial encounters, um, um, it took like 150 uh, for complex queries, like uh, where we have uh, eight to nine concepts. It took um, uh, 150 seconds in the small warehouses. Uh, when we used large warehouses, it uh, reduced uh, the query execution time, reduced a bit. So uh, all our work is uh, in available in GitHub. Uh, uh, we um, have we have modified I2P2 core server repositories, and we are working with the I2P2 developer team um, uh, to uh, merge our implementation uh, into the I2P2's uh, main repository. Uh, we have our I2P2 core server repositories. Here is the. Uh, um, uh, here, here are the branch uh, for I2B2 core server, I2B2 data, and we also have our uh, own Docker images and CID CD pipelines in I2B2 serverless repository. Though we haven't done the CI CD pipeline yet, we only configured uh, using the AWS CLI. Um, uh, and uh, we have our implementation for Precornet uh, CDM to I2B2 harmonization in the following repository. So how do you uh, how do you uh, you use uh, uh, Snowflake in your own data source? Just like you would con uh, configure uh, for any other data source in your. Uh, I2B2, uh, you just need to define the data, uh, data source and you need to have your data in uh, Snowflake. Uh, you can uh, you can have your uh, uh, existing database running in Postgres or Oracle or SQL Server. You just need to add another data source uh, which has data in the Snowflake and you should be able to use it under a different, maybe under a different project. So, uh, 
here is the example for us um, uh, configuring snowflake um, data source you can also uh, uh, configure snowflake data source uh, using your uh, jboss cli uh, you first need to uh, add the snowflake module you, uh, then you need to add the driver definition then you uh, you can add your data source uh, as as much as you can for our dev environment we have six to seven data source configured for and for our production we have two data source configured and it is working fine and here's the definition of jdbc url um, uh, uh, we also provided support for, uh, in uh, I2B2 data repository. Um, th this is the same um, uh, data source configuration that you would do uh, for uh, other data source in your DB, uh, DB pro uh, properties file. And yeah, that's all. Questions? I, um, this is great. Um, I, I think you had a slide there with like GitHub addresses on it. Yeah. Can I take a photo of that? You flew by real quick and I didn't get a chance to. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to capture it. So we uh, so we haven't uh, changed any of the functionalities of I2B2, but we enhanced the functionality by adding new data source. So. Um, um, so that you can uh, have your uh, previous implementation as it is. Yeah, and this, this isn't quite a question either. Um, we really like this work and think it's a great addition to ITV2, and thank you for doing this. And thank you so much. We've been working with Saber on getting this into 1.8, so we want to make this available to people in 1.8. It's, uh, it's not, we haven't done our testing on it yet, so we're not putting it in the, the official preview release, but yes. I was talking to Diane, and she suggested we make available the instructions on how to set it up in your I2B2 if you're interested in doing that. Yeah, I would The solution to... might be this, but uh, we'll, we'll have to talk about how to, how to make that available. So we'll, we'll work on that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, great talk. So can you comment on the possibility to deploy on Google Cloud and the utilization of the big data tool sets. Till now, I haven't uh, like uh, uh, I haven't done much. Uh, I haven't uh, explored much of it, but uh, I can look into it. So it is it is a part of future work. So uh, till now, I've been the only one working in this. Uh, uh, to like develop the support, so I haven't got much time to like uh, think out of the box. So. So this is probably a really uh, ignorant question because I don't know, know nothing about Snowflake. But uh, if you are storing your PHI on a Snowflake, does the institution have any concern over the security, the confidentialities, and compliance, anything like that? And how did how did you get around that? I think uh, Vasanti uh, is a more appropriate to. Uh, answer the question. I'm more like a developer guy. I was asked to develop it and I did it. So yeah. So you're asking if uh, Snowflake is approved to um, store PHI? Mm. So we have a BA with Snowflake. We have our Snowflake um, representatives here in the room so they could answer some of those um, tech uh, documentation or anything related to the BAA. But yeah, all of all of our um, data warehouse is in Snowflake, all PHI, and we also have it approved to have CMS data. So it, it shouldn't be a problem. And our um, IRB and security officers are strict, so <laughs> they did go through everything to make, it sure, make sure it's, it works. I think about the other question about GPC Cloud. So you are you talking about having Snowflake in GPC Cloud or having, uh, so if it is Snowflake in GPC Cloud, yes, I think um, Snowflake could work on Azure, um, AWS, and GPC Cloud, or I don't know if there are more than these three, but yeah, those three. So it, Snowflake could work on.
Yeah, I, I think um, that's w um, what um, Sabar was showing, how um, big the tables were that we were querying. Is that your question? Oh, then I'm not sure. So, so another question I have is about performance, uh, both in terms of ETL performance and the runtime performance of the query. Do you notice any uh, improvements or degradation by moving to snow, Snowflake? So um, I would say like uh, um, OLAP data, uh, data uh, query engines uh, uh, showing promising results in extracting patient information. However, there are some uh, like uh, there are other queries that run in backend, which are more of uh, OLTP types. So that's why you'll find like uh, uh, you'll see, uh, if you uh, see the uh, like uh, query execution times, uh, like uh, it takes, uh, to, uh, 10 to uh, 20 seconds to extract the uh, extract the patient information for each concepts but how uh, the in o, uh, in OLAP databases insertion and update or single uh, extracting single uh, or uh, single row operations are expensive it takes more milliseconds than uh, than the traditional transitional databases. So uh, here you'll find like expanding ontology or dragging the ontologies uh, could be, uh, you'll find some lagging in uh, in those uh, user interaction, but it works really fast in terms of extracting users data. So like uh, from my our experience, experiences, we had our uh, database in RDS. We haven't done, uh, done any data engineering, but uh, like uh, we found like some of the queries uh, were running for hours, but in Snowflake, all everything is done uh, is uh, done in maybe uh, like more than uh, less than five minutes. So can I ask um, two questions, Saber? Um, one, how yeah. long has uh, Missouri been live on Snowflake? Uh, more than one year. One year, and and I have another question that you probably can't answer, but um, it, you you talked about the fact that it it only uses resources when it needs it, so there's yes. got to be cost savings. So yeah. right. has has anybody done any any analysis on like what it the sa the savings? Yeah. So uh, we um, like uh, we uh, 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 when we had our. Um, uh, database instances in RDS because we uh, wanted everything in cloud. Uh, we don't have the infrastructures to maintain the database server. So uh, we used one uh, uh, Postgres optimized uh, uh, database engine and uh, with uh, uh, one, uh, 28 GB of RAM and uh, it was costing us to $1,000 to $3,000 per month. But here, uh, uh, it is using, I think, $1,000, and we are using large warehouses. But you can use smaller warehouses, and it will work fine. I would say compared to our Snow, um, RDS Postgres instance versus Snowflake, we are operating in like 20% of the cost. Um, regarding the application side, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, right now, the um, server code runs on Wildfly, and you also need a web server, right? Did you have problem configuring that in the cloud? I mean, how does that work? No, like uh, we uh, uh, like containerize everything uh, by reading the instruction from the uh, inst uh, like uh, installation guidelines from IW2, and it is working fine. So we had uh, no issue with configuring the server, but we wanted to like uh, use Snowflake as one of IW2 supported backend database. So we did a lot of changes in IW2 core server repository and IW2 data repositories. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we also, uh, and we, uh, yeah. Okay, so the, so it wasn't sufficient just to change that data source information. You had to go into the code and. So, uh, yeah, and yeah. like, uh, uh, 
uh, if you're familiar uh, familiar with um, ITV2 code server repository source code, uh, like the um, uh, extracting from, like reading from uh, all the uh, like SQL uh, uh, operations are uh, occur in, in the in its DAO objects. So uh, we went through all the DAO objects. We uh, collected yeah. all the SQL files. We added Snowflake data, uh, like Snowflake oh, supported Large SQL code. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For example, yeah, yeah. For example, like um, uh, um, it uses in, uh, uh, sequences, right? Uh, in I2B2 uh, backend databases. So maybe like in Oracle, the implementation is different. In Postgres, is different. So we added another. Yeah, yeah. We uh, in future uh, we can add more data sourcing to it, like uh, w w which database uh, database engine is support SQL engine. And actually, we have a uh, question in from the chat just to confirm that twenty percent cost is on top of RDS or added cost from Snowflake. So for running queries, having um, a RDS Postgres instance up and running all the time um, with the same performance, we had to scale up, have a bigger instance versus once we switched to Snowflake, we had, we, we had an existing Snowflake. So uh, I wouldn't talk about those costs. I was just talking about the credits that we used to run the queries from the web client. So that cost was for, 20% of what we had to do with the Postgres, having another Postgres instance, um, scaling it up. Um, so since we were AD, um, using AWS, so I'm comparing with the AWS RDS Postgres costs, not uh, any local instance. So it might be different if it's local instance. All right, any other questions before we move on? No, oh, but a big round of applause for Saber. Thank you, everyone.